Okay, I just switched the camera. And then you still help me to focus. I okay. don't know if, it, if this is a, it probably works. Works. And you can maybe change the angle a little bit. Okay, that's about it. Let me go this one. Let me set mm -hmm. up this Facebook one. Wow. <coughs> Hello everybody, I'm Henry Lee. Now we are at uh, my studio with a visitor from DC. I try to set up a live broadcast. We'll do redo the entry uh, after we set up a Facebook connection here. Thanks for waiting. Okay, let's see. Let's, I don't know what they got to change to something oh. different. Uh, this is for public, right? Mm -hmm. public. Start live video. Mm -hmm. We have a visitor too. Mm -hmm. Start live video. Okay, live. No, I don't know if it's cl close enough. You can move it. Uh, let me let me try to leave room. You can you can cut. You can sneak in more. All right. Okay. <laughs> can you see my face? I can't see your face. Now I can. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, YouTuber. Hello, Facebook friends. Um, now I'm at my home studio, Blue Heron Arts, in Southern California. We have a very warm, rainy, um, wet day. <laughs> Drizzling outside, uh, temperature is uh, about, uh, I think it's 60 or 70s, should be 80s. Right? Anyway, I wear it almost like a spring, because it's, it's kind of warm today. I will uh, do a demo of uh, our paper samplers, or paper, small paper samples. Uh, I think we have a package open here. Uh, the reason we do this is that um, a group of people in DC they want to know to learn more about Chinese painting paper that we carry at the Blue Heron Arts. Um, so I would like to give you some uh, uh, knowledge as far as I know about all of this uh, paper. It's I know from my own experience learning watercolor recently, I have bought all the brands and different uh, uh, papers like uh, rough, cold press, hot press. It's very confusing in the beginning. And some are made of cotton, some are made of uh, uh, tree fibers. So they behave very differently. Um, same with the Jap Chinese or Japanese paper. The paper we carry are basically made in China, but some of them have joint venture with Japan, and they 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 tend to identifiable with each other. So if you paint Sumie or Jap a Chinese brush painting, um, we use the same kind of paper. There's not much difference in the paper um, that we use between Japanese and Chinese painting. Okay. Um, I can answer questions uh, like uh, if, uh, if you have any questions, just interrupt me. Mark is here monitoring the screen for me. Uh, if you have a question, we can answer live. Uh, let me start by separate, sorry, <laughs> separating the different papers. Basically, you can divide the paper into two groups, one sized, one unsized. Um, in Chinese, mature or immature, uh, shen or shou. Um, shen or shou. Shen means uh, unsized. Shou means sized. In the paper making industry, size means the water resist treatment. Normally, we use an, uh, allen. Chinese paper are made uh, all, you know, like, a, uh, what do you call it? Soft sizing. After the paper mm -hmm. is, is uh, uh, pr pr produced, we use the raw paper to make a mature paper. So you, you kind of treat the paper uh, after it, it, um, the raw paper is made, right? So it becomes mature. So 
um, all the paper is made raw, so to speak, and then you, you treat it. Uh, because in Western watercolor, you have hard size and the soft size uh, at the same time, or uh, but we don't use wax or such things in the paper uh, pop, pop, right? Mm -hmm. the, to make a hard size, um, as far as I know. <laughs> but there are some papers that tend to be semi size, like a mulberry paper. Um, I don't consider that the size, but the effect is like semi size. Um, so even they are not sized, they have this kind of uh, uh, semi sized character. So uh, we, you know, don't worry about uh, how they are made. I think the most important is the effect. Um, we can roughly uh, say that uh, non absorbent and absorbent uh, sized is non absorbent, and sized is. Uh, um, and size is a, a raw paper, right? A, uh, absorbent paper, okay. So, uh, same as the silk, let me put the silk, silk aside, uh, but most of the silk are sized already. For, for your viewers, um, what we're doing today is going through your sample pack, isn't that correct? You have a, your shop has a sample pack that yeah, okay. you... Uh, you had f pulled out for our examination. Right. So this package um, we sell at our store. You can get it for twenty-five dollars because we have to um, mark them and cut the pieces. To, uh, so it's just uh, there's no shipping. I think shipping included. Um, we s we sell. F you can also buy individual uh, paper that you're interested for one dollar only. So this uh, package has about 30 some uh, varieties, and including some silk. Um, so if you if you interest all of them, you can buy the package. Or if you if you like, you can select just by clicking uh, each uh, name. You know, under there's a list on the description description page. The list all the names of the paper. But they don't. Uh, I don't bind them because you have different ways maybe to assemble them. Um, you can. So I I will go with the paper. We can we can make two groups first, the size and unsize. As we then we can uh, divide further. I think. While while you're doing that, I just note for the viewers that you've marked on each sheet of paper what the what the kind of paper is yeah and that way it's very easy for somebody to yeah. uh to figure out what they're looking at yeah you can use the keyword on the label to um search on our website blue hair art to find them like this one same, says semi size shuan thick some just uh, like a single shuan you know it's not a full name, a descriptive name, but it has the key identifying board uh, to the unique product. Uh, um, I think, it, you know, as, long, as soon as I'm an archaeologist, basically when I study this kind of thing, I classify them. And there are many ways to classify things, you know. So uh, for me, I can classify them by material, so you have the Shuan paper, um, primarily made by um, with a special um, fiber from uh, Qingtan tree bark. It's a kind of mulberry, but not exactly. <clears throat> and uh, the straws, so we call that rice paper. It has straw fiber in it. It's not the, you know the rice, but the, from the hay. Um, the, the, the rice, but they grow special rice, not for for food, but for paper making. Um, rice paper, mulberry paper, mulberry paper has some with color, and bamboo paper, and ma, or hemp paper. Um, so maybe we should do that first. That would be a good start, I think. So we put um, all the mulberry paper on, on one together, you know, and then the uh, other papers, the Sean paper, mobile paper, Sean paper, Ma paper, 
And blue paper. Then blue paper is a very uh, uh, small group. So we may use other papers. Let's just go with the model. And another paper, number. We number them. Um, with the mobile, we have a uh, number system, number one, number two numbers, just for convenience. It's a, it's a problem that there's no national standard. Um, so even the same paper, like a single shrine made by different uh, manufacturer is very different. However, we all, we all um, agree that there's a, there's a brand name that's the best in the uh, rice paper group, which is the Red Star Shrine. Um, the Red Star Shrine is the, the best. Then up, uh, behind that, you know, below that, you can, you can have all the other brands. They vary from one to each other. Even the same maker, each, each uh, batch is different. So, uh, because they're all handmade, you know, that makes it a little difficult compared to um, like a watercolor paper industry, you have relatively more stable uh, quality, right? So uh, we try to keep it uh, consistent, um, but there's no, no way that, you know, same paper would be the same. Exact same, like the width, the weight could vary even within the bulk of the 100 sheets. So you might get a little bit variation. But the, the, the thick, um, a double layer, a double weight is different, definitely different than the single uh, weight. So let me just roughly give the double. Uh, I just separated the shun, then we go through each group. Because uh, most people, they will choose between mulberry and the shun. When you start a painting, you will think about, because, you know, when I start a painting, I will think if I use the rice paper or if I use the mulberry paper. What is the um, main plant that's used for shun paper? Uh -huh. And of course, mulberry is mulberry, uh -huh. but... I think it's a Qingtan, um, but Qingtan is very expensive. They have cotton, uh, so, you know, cotton shrine. I think this is cotton. Um, it's a soft, like a white, uh, very fine. They also use some other fiber um, to, to replace that. So the typical, uh, there's only one county in China that has that kind of tree, a bush, kind of a Qingtan bush. Uh, they, they, you know, um, kind of cut and they regrow very fast. So, uh, but it's a very limited resource. That's why the red star shine is so expensive. It's almost like a gold, you know. The, the price goes with the, the gold. Uh, what is our role? I think we have other papers. One thing I'll notice is that in this pack that you've prepared mm -hmm. for people, uh, you also have silk yeah. uh, uh, as well. So mm -hmm. there are some other pa papers that aren't mulberry or shun. Yeah, we have the um, silicone paper also for mounting and uh, some uh, uh, silk. Uh, I. I think we also have a heavy seal, because recently we added. I don't think here, but uh, we have four kinds of seals now. Here, the, the, the two, and then that's good for the gombi or elaborated style. They are sized. And we have this road um, pre mounted silk also that has the paper on the back. It's very convenient. And this is the so this is the, the silk samples, and we have uh, very some specialty shine, like the golden shine. If you like Gumby or elaborate style, uh, you can use this to paint a uh, very luxury uh, watercolor. So, you, know, you don't have to use uh, the you know tone to 
from the entire painting or background with uh, your t your uh, extensive uh, hands or gold leaves. Right now we have a number of people watching, so if anyone wants to ask a question, yeah. they can type it in and I'll, I'll uh, give you the question. Okay, great. Um, let me um, start by, let me go through the Shun, it's a big group. I think the most confusing part maybe that's, uh, that's we, I'll put all the other papers in one pile. Uh, Japanese rice paper, I think it's, uh, it's a Shuan paper, machine made Shuan paper, I put it on this side. It's kind of hard, you know, any system could have uh, uh, some uh, blur areas, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes. So um, we have, uh, let me put this on the side. So let's concentrate on the Shuan paper. Red Star Shuan is the, is the best. and. Uh, you can tell the front and the back by uh, the, the brush traces, which is uh, left when you when they put this on the drying board, drying wall. Actually, it's made of a shining uh, metal with a steam behind. So the shiny part is, is the the side that uh, facing the wall, the dry, the final um, drying process when they produce it. So the front it should be the shiny side that we use to paint on. And the other side they brush it when they brush it on the onto the cut wall for joining, you would you'll see these traces. Can you see this? Can you show them? That's the one uh, big uh, problem that I had with my students. They always use the wrong side. Although mm. the, the rough side made it look more natural. Um, they do tend to make the color dull uh, or gray than the shiny side. So let me uh, uh, let me just use. Uh, should I got a piece of felt? Maybe. Oh yeah, you you find a felt to that. Red. I asked my wife to give me a, a, a felt so we can do some demo. So let me pick up some uh, other unsized shun or raw shun. The next quality shun is the cotton shun. It's very nice, I like. And uh, in terms of thickness, we have triple and double. Double shun is my favorite. And uh, semi size, which is good for students. I will show you. Okay, the red star shown is the uh, number one. The number two will go for the cotton shown. Yeah, same size shown the student grade shown. Double shown is my favorite. Triple shun is uh, a little too heavy. I will compare these together later. Let me show you. Okay, here. And uh, Chicago wing is the thinnest, the sh uh, unsized shun. What else are these uh, rules? Some machine made paper will make those through that later, I think. This is a uh, some specialty paper with the uh, color or sparklers. You can do that with the color. And this uh, size is shown, regular size shown. Let's see. Single shown. Single shown. Let me just do the unsized shown first. Size double. Confucius Shuan is another student grade Shuan. Plan backing paper that's not for painting. Semi size Shuan thick. Semi size Shuan is for the other paper. So let's do the typical Shuan. You, you know, it's more like a professional grade first. Size. 
this collection. Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, compare the the best um, hand size the shrine. Okay, let me do a typical um, subject matter that you I would use this kind of paper, which is uh, a chick or a little bird, if you want. And uh, we can use a little bit of watercolor, just to make it uh, uh, more fun. I use a Hobin, Hobin, or Hobin, <laughs> maybe uh, Hobin. I, th I think it could, could be either way. Okay. It's a Japanese brand, uh, watercolor. It has more body, it's like a semi, um, transparent sometimes, especially those light colors. Um, I use this on watercolors and now I write on, on the shuan paper. Because the shuan paper is the rice paper. Okay. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Okay, so you. Uh, is this a good angle to see? Yeah, some labels we um, we put it on the wrong side. So you, it, uh, when you got this package, uh, don't take uh, the uh, label side as front. You have to use your own uh, touching and eye uh, to separate, you know, the sides to to tell the different side. So for this one it should be this smooth side, and I have to look at this one. And I think this one is labeled correctly on the um, front side. Should I label always on one side, and then we should probably. But on the other hand, um, yeah, you can. On the other hand, well, I don't know. I, as long as people know to yeah. to not to rely on where the label is to yeah. to find the front, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, I will use a little bit of convenient ink uh, for the ink. So we, in, in Chinese painting, we always load all the colors on one brush um, because in on rice paper it will keep the gradation or um, you know a rainbow of colors in place, just as you load it. On rice paper, I mean, on regular watercolor, it's impossible. So all the color will mix, you know, mm. rain into each other. But on on, Ch on Chinese paper, we have this advantage that you can s you can keep the uh, multi load multiple color in one stroke. And these are the Shun papers. This the, the the red star shun on red the left. Okay. This is the white uh, cotton shun. Okay. On the right, on my right side. Okay. And uh, this is the the first stroke uh, is for the bird uh -huh. uh, head or the the chicken. Let me finish by uh, just you know you can go back to the palette to re reload the color. And a little bit of ink. If it, I use a larger brush, maybe I should use. I don't have to reload. That's. This is a basic uh, sheep hair brush, uh, among the three basics I, I'm using. I can also use a super wash, maybe. Um, let me just finish this first. So, if I if I have a fully loaded brush, I will go faster to avoid. Um, the uh, smear over you know, too much uh, bleeding. Uh, so there are, there are many factors like uh, speed and pressure also involved, the amount of moisture. So don't be scared when you're first time using it. Oh, you, you want, like in, on watercolor, you, you try to, to think uh, uh, after the brush is uh, on the paper. You can also do that, but use a smaller brush. If you use a big brush with lots of moisture, it will start to it will scare you right? because it is expands. And uh, one of the uh, advantage of rice paper is that it will keep the stroke separate with the watermark. So 
100 years from now, people can still appreciate the process of uh, your pain. Like a museum will go, um, when I see a painting, I'll do this in my heart, uh, in my mind. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You know, the one, two, three uh, strokes, because I can tell where it started. Right. Most of mine just end up in the bird cage. Yeah. And I. Uh, so another trick is that uh, I sometimes touch the water right before I uh, go to paint, go to the paper. So uh, it, it soften the edge. Like if I want a hard edge, I, I touch the ink and do this. Right. Right away. If I want a soft start, I touch the water and then just uh, soften it. And I, um, I can use uh, uh, this is called wet into wet into in Western watercolor, right? Mm -hmm. This is, shows you the um, Feather effect. This is the cutting shot. Cutting shot. Okay, so, um, so compared um, these two, I think. Um, this is softer when you paint. It's it's like a, the brush is more um, kind of stick to the paper when you paint. This is a little bit um, more uh, more how do you say um, crispy a little bit. Ah. This, this one is more uh, uh, softer. So this is softer, this is a little firm. Maybe the front of this one is a little bit a little bit smoother and that's why the brush it goes a little faster, maybe? Oh, just because of the absorbency, I think. I see. Yeah, when you have a more absorbent paper, like a cotton shine, it tends to slow down your stroke. It, it just, like you can paint a, a very, uh, you want, if you want a very uh, sharp edge, like a bamboo, you want to use this one. If you paint on this one, it would make a very cotton bamboo. <laughs> so a softer effect, softer, be yeah, because fairly. you're you're the brush is moving a little slower. No, and the, the, the mm, texture mm, is mm. the different in texture. Okay. okay, so this is this one is a little crispier, you know, like a um, more uh, a little give it a, you can have more uh, edge, hard edge. Mm. This one is a softer. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm going to show this to the show. This one is the first one, yeah. and this paper is Red Star, Red Star. Shun. Yeah, this is the white cotton shun. Okay. okay, and then the white cotton shun. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you a question about the um, sumier you were using. It's it isn't a ink stick, and it's not bottled ink. Could you just tell everybody what that is? Yeah, this is a uh, what we call the convenient ink. Uh, let me just uh, finish this painting while I'm talking. So I, I use a small whistle brush. I use wet uh, moisture and I go um, wet brush to rub it off. It's just like a watercolor half pens or those uh, pens uh, colors. Um, the, in Japanese color, what is the name? The Gansai. Gansai. Uh, yeah, it's similar to that. But uh, I usually use them outside. Uh, now I find it's good uh, ink uh, ink supply for a student. The reason is that uh, you won't get overload because uh, uh, in, if you use uh, bottled ink, it's a convenient, more convenient these days, right? You got lots of ink on the on the brush than you need, ah. so you 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 have more chance to mess up. So if you have a very Limited uh, ink on the brush. It's just almost a thirsty brush. You 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 have less chance to mess it up. You know. So you uh, 
you can have more control with this ink. Oh. It's convenient. You don't have to grind it. It's not um, uh, like the bottle ink got speared uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's very good for student. We we use this ink now with the student pack, the the starter kit. This is this could be very um, dark, right? And you can dilute it to get a very uh, light. It's getting lighter and lighter. And I don't reload the ink. So this two blacks should. Uh, it's slightly different. This one is darker than that. But the darkest is in the eye. Let me finish this one too. Uh, the same. So this ink uh, is considered like uh, um, what we call the overnight ink kind of effect. Overnight ink means uh, normally you grind the ink and you, you uh, use for the day. If you leave it overnight, it will dry like that. It, it will give more body or grains or particles uh, like a pastel effect. So when you dilute it, um, you will you will see more uh, grains mm -hmm. with the fresh ink, the free, uh, the fresh, fresh ink. Uh, so many artists, modern artists, they like this kind of uh, pastel effect. So they will put the <coughs> ink stone in sunshine, or you can put a bowl of uh, uh, ink in sunshine, or uh, let it dry, and then uh, rewet it. You'll get this, oh. the overnight uh, ink effect, that's the pastel effect with more grainy uh, body or grains. So, um, but I normally would use uh, peach sap glue to add to the overnight ink, uh, even this ink, if you dilute it and to, uh, to make it uh, more um, organic, you know, <clears throat> not, not so uh, grainy. I see. Yeah. This glue that this glue that you add is it um, peach sap glue. Oh, okay. Peach sap. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So um, this is the best kind of uh, more, uh, sorry rice paper. The one is the cotton shine, the white cotton shine. The other is the red star. Shine. The red star is the best. It's very expensive because they only produce. Certain amount are monopolized by the government. Um, so they have the, the best resources, the most authentic, is a cultural heritage. Um, used to be the tributary goods for the emperor, you know, the, the court. So they kept that as a national monopoly. That's why it's so rare. And uh, we do have very good single shine that, you know, you can compare it with this not. That much different, but uh, uh, so I, I was just to do, just use this one instead of spend money on the brand. You know, you might uh, just have what you want. This is a single unsized shine. Let me just do another test. Um, the better uh, here we are. Uh, Okay, so, so let's just see if it is smears. It, it, it um, feels like a little um, less uh, absorbent than 
then the uh, it's a little thicker too, but it depends on mm. on the maker. We purposely ordered the thicker ones, so it, it, it less smears than the. Uh, this one also has thicker, you know, or low, uh, thinner ones, maybe. But this one happens to be a thinner uh, version than this. Um, we call it it uh, the jade plate. It's a special uh, technology they use in the paper industry. <coughs> Back into that shot. Okay, let me close that. So the the single shrine you're painting in now is a, a little bit more budget friendly than the yeah, red it's star. Yeah, it's, it's less, much less expensive than the this one, like a ten dollar uh, sheet for sheet. This one maybe four fifty or something. Like that. Okay, it's half of the at least half of the, the price. So you get basically the same effect. But if you're really good, uh, you want to have like a, uh, especially like you do icicles, you want a watermark between the strokes, or like a shrimp, like a chibashi shrimp, every stroke is uh, separated with a watermark, you go with the, uh, this shrimp, this uh, um, red star shrimp. Okay. This one has also watermarks, but I think um, maybe the gun uh, Arabia, this kind of paint doesn't really create these watermarks. I think you have to use fresh ink. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, the. Uh, the regular size the single shot. Unsized, sorry. Unsized single shot. Unsized single shot. And uh, now the, the last two samples we want to uh, compare with this uh, test is the uh, triple shot, double and the triple shot. Again, I have to tell the difference according to the texture. The rough side is the back. We sometimes put the, I think in this case, put um, labels on the back. So you can use the front to, to paint. And it's a good um, that you can just look at uh, the front without the, the label to, mm. to train your eyes to tell if it was paper is uh, the one you're using. Get, uh, make friends with the paper is very important. There is no um, way to control the paper. As I told my students in my class, the shrimp paper is not something like a canvas. You, 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 you can control it. Mm -hmm. You can enslave it. Um, you have to make friends to, to date with it. <laughs> One of the things that, that I've noticed as a student is that the humidity, or whether you're in air conditioning or heat, yeah. you know, you've got the heat on in, in the classroom or your house, that affects mm -hmm. a lot of this. Exactly. So um, I know this will take a lot of uh, moisture. That's why I use a bigger brush. So if you're using the same brush, you, you have to go back to the palette constantly, right? Uh, so you, you, you have to use a proper brush for different paper. So you can use small paper for single um, weight paper. For double weight and the triple weight, you you better use a soft brush like a, the squirrel brush in watercolor to work also. Yeah. So let's do, should I do a different different subject? Um, let's see, the for, for flowers, maybe a rose, okay? I'm going to do a rose test. I haven't used watercolor on this paper, so it's a good experiment for me to see how it works. Because uh, about uh, two months ago, I started to use Western watercolors. Um, so it's very... I used the Mulberry paper recently, as you can see on my Facebook and uh, YouTube, uh, with the uh, Western watercolor. Now I I will start to use uh, Western watercolor on shrimp paper. That's my goal. Eventually, I will try to you know, fuse 
to do fusion work. They use watercolor to paint watercolor or um, Okay, so I make a, a little uh, orange color in the bottom of the brush and uh, uh, let me take all the oranges and now uh, this uh, red red color in the front then I will get some uh, I think in, in Ch Ch Chinese we call it the root. Here is the rose matter. It's a dark the red on the, on the tip. Right. So I'm going to do the rose. Um, let me just draw something in, in front of them. You have some models right out there. Right, exactly. So uh, let me just draw this. Uh, I don't think you can see. But yeah, some, some part is nice. Just the outside window. There's one on the corner. And I can see on the other side, far side of the fence, it has a beautiful big house there. Okay. All right, we still have the last rose from um, year 2017. Um, the gardeners uh, had mercy this week, they didn't cut it yet. <laughs> they will come back to cut it maybe next week. Today is raining, I think they are not coming back. Um, so we're, we're going to do the rows and start from the center. I always do that. And it's like a triangle on the outside. So you see the double shine takes a lot of moisture. So I need to reload it. This is how I do it sometimes. I, I can use a spoon. Uh, or another clean brush to get some water into the bottom of the brush. You can use the uh, bottom to load, reload the color of the yellows and uh, then the front with the uh, red again. This time a little less dark maybe. So when we get to the outside, I use the, the side, side brush. So you can see all the gradation like right, beautifully uh, mm. in my brush, like just like that. It's a peach color, peach uh, color rose. And I have to leave some white, flying white in between, otherwise it will be uh, no chi, you know, no 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 space for breath. And this is double shine. It's very uh, good. Even before mounting, and you can see the, the color is very rich already. This is triple shine. Triple shine is also very good for watercolor, I think. Basic, basically, basically, when it's double or triple, that means that refers to. Right. That it's three times as, yes. as thick as a single shot. Yes, um, it, actually they put two, two layers together. Oh. Um, if um, you, you send this to a mounting shop, the mounting master could uh, steal one to, from you. Oh. You can separate the two. You know, you can make two um, paintings. So um, be careful. <laughs> you gotta, you got to pick your framing master well. <laughs> That's just the, you know, uh, sorry. Um, okay, the triple shine has triple layers, so it's uh, triple thicker than single shine. Uh, so when you buy a buck, you can, you, you, one buck equals to 50 instead of 100. Mm -hmm. And if you buy a buck of, uh, a buck of uh, triple shine, you got only 33 mm -hmm. instead of uh, 50. Right? So that's the math, okay? Easy to understand. Okay, that's... Um, Put some more moisture here in the bottom, a uh, heel of the brush, and uh, I just use what's left over here as the base. Then I can, you know, adjust the, the tip. You can use your finger uh, to squeeze out some moisture so you get room for more colors. So I, I don't keep loading, loading, and become a big blob in the, in the front of the brush. I keep it 
uh, it uh, not chippy, right? At least. So just take some extra moisture off. Maybe some uh, dark. Right. <coughs> just keep it uh, a slant position. So you you have this on. Uh, just to load like that. So I, I, I rotate the brush, in painting rows is very challenging, it's not like a puny, you just keep it pointing to the center, which is tricky. In rows, the dark is on the outside, so I keep rotating the brush um, to find my edges. You, you have to twist the brush to keep it straight. It's, this is a soft brush. It, it takes lots of, uh, it, it loads a lot of uh, paints. What would you say was the diff slight difference in feeling between this, this double shun and the triple? Okay, in my, um, in my teacher's words, this is too thick. He, uh -huh. he told me, yeah, this is too thick. When I you know, uh, asking my teacher, he says, I should, you, even this one could be too thick for, for some painter, uh, artist, because uh, it, um, you can, you, know, you have to go back all the time. And uh, it gives you a, if you don't have enough moisture or water, it will, it will, you'll have a dryness, you kind of feel of a um, thirsty look. But you can you can do some um, something like a kalashikomi, you know what we call it uh, dripping to to add some moisture to this kind of paper because uh, it's like a painting on a coffee filter. Uh huh. It it just goes through <laughs> deeply inside, not uh -huh. spread horizontally, but more um, like a, you know you can. If I, you can, you can add some other color, just like that. So you're adding a, you're adding another layer. Uh, 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 yeah, some white uh, uh, with uh, maybe a little, a little bit of yellow. So it just, uh, it will take more color uh, vertically. I mean, the depths uh -huh. to give it has more depths. Uh -huh. If you do this on a single try, it will just run. This way, you know, very, uh, it was, or it, it won't because it, it lacks the thickness to take to to take it. I see. On, on this kind of paper, if you do very fast, uh, it will just on the surface, and if you do it slower, it will take. It, uh, this is what I mean. If you use the single tone or value, right, just um, the the result will vary according to the speed because the absorbance. Mm -hmm. Because if you do uh, faster, it will be lighter. If you do, if you go slower, it will be uh, darker. Just you know, vary the speed, you'll get different uh, tonality or values. On this paper. Wh which of these, which of these papers do you use for varying subjects? Do you do you prefer one kind of paper? For particular subjects and a different paper for something else. Yeah, I will use what uh, this color for flowers um, more than landscape. I see. But there are many landscape painters use uh, double shine uh, or triple shine because it's more sturdy to withstand to hold uh, moisture. You know, washes wet washes. You will not fall in, fall apart. Like uh, uh, now, let's go to, to the student paper, like uh, uh, semi size Shuan or Confucius Shuan. Uh, it will, it will have an easy tear, tear. Oh, okay. Tone. Yeah. How do you say that? <laughs> the it will, it will go. If you use lots of moisture with a large brush, it would make a hole easily. Oh, easy to easy yeah. to, to, to rough to, up the to, surface or cause yeah, it. Right. Okay. This, this is more sturdy and, and can uh, hold washes, uh, layers of washes. If you, you know, this is the chip, that's compared to the chip 
um, cheap papers, and it's the the semi size and Confucius strand. Um, we also have the thick semi size strand, thick okay, semi size strand thin and semi size strand thick Confucius strand. This two, this three are same uh, made by same maker um, that with special orders for students. That uh, let me show you. Let's just do the same chick, maybe, right? Same, same chick. Okay. I I'll tell you this: the triple shun really is much heavier than the other paper. Yeah, that's it the, feels it feels like a card. Like yeah, like a like a, a playing card almost. Yeah, let's just thick. do the rolls. Okay. Let's just do the rolls. Well, they're out there. You might as well take advantage. Yeah. Okay. On um, semi size shun. Because it, 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 um, it's a little size, very thin size. Um, so it, it, it tends to bleed less than, um, than the unsized shone. This is to the base is the same. You can see the texture is the same, almost identical. But on, on this one, if I, um, let's just do a pedal. Like you, you, you see the expanding very fast. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you, you see that, that expands very quickly. And uh, it tends to bleed, just like the uh -huh. single single shun, single unsized shun. If we omit the size unsized, mm -hmm. we say single shun. It means unsized because the size shun is less uh, used in you know in freestyle painting mm -hmm. or spontaneous painting. So in spontaneous painting, we always just you know, refer to single double things like that. So this is a semi size. Let me try. You see? So you give it, it's more forgiving, right? I have more time to to think. I the best part it doesn't really go like this. The same uh, stroke. This is a this is a huge difference in the in how much the water spreads in these two. Yeah, but it's still absorbent. Yes. Yeah. It's it's not. That's the beauty of that. It's not. It's not like water repelling. It's just it doesn't spread as fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this is that's why I suggest to start with this with this new beginner uh, to get used to the absorbency, but not uh, yet to go this far to, to control the uh, smearing effect. You know, like uh, this is the part of you know, the beauty. If you are used to this kind of effect, you're not scared. You 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 can kind of uh, make guided accident with mm -hmm. this. This one uh, you want more control. <laughs> you can you can have more control yeah, mm. if you want. Okay, let me just uh, finish uh, the rest. Maybe we should just let it go to keep you working on the. Okay. Color. Yeah. I, it's the purpose is not to paint anything like today. So this is semi size. The thick. Let me compare this. Uh, semi size shine with a thick. This is thicker semi size. This is like double semi size. Okay, um, so it it's wider and more firm. Uh -huh. um, just different in the thickness, similar to to the to to, to the thin one. This this, this one is. I'm just showing them one more time. Confucius this is Confucius shown. It's unsized. Uh, uh, Single shine kind of student grade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, one of my, one of my um, artist friend in Chicago tested all that, and his favorite is the Confucius shine. He's his uh, master. <laughs> well, not only that, for a lot of people, they're less inhibited if the paper is a little less expensive. Like you yeah. hate to ruin a, a yeah, yeah. fifty dollars sheet of paper, right, right. but if it turns out it's a little less expensive, yeah. people are a little freer. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's why um, I also like inexpensive paper. I use uh, uh, my favorite paper is this. Yesterday I went to Bleak. I bought a whole bunch of this. <laughs> this is a ten dollar for like a. For, the, for 60 sheets. The, you, you know, I do a lot of outdoor sketching. That's the best paper. Yeah, you can I, I do, like this paper. Yeah. 
No matter what. <laughs> you, it's, it's a, <laughs> it's a cl- it gives you clean, sharp lines yeah. if you want it, and the and surface is not too yeah, yeah, yeah. The surface is not too smooth. So it's for me, yeah. this paper is uh, it's a student grade paper. It's, it's for me works for the best. You know, who knows? Same thing with the Chinese uh, painting. You know, okay. It doesn't really uh, mean that you can you have to use the most expensive paper. You know, just the best uh, paper suit your needs is the best. And uh, you know what you feel less um, pressure. You know. I like this one has an interesting like how you've pushed put a piece of uh, a water on that. It and keeps s- the stroke. Yeah, and, no, I didn't put this. Uh, that it keeps the watermark or the stroke uh-huh. separate from the smear. Um, it may have to do with the paints. I don't know. It's a happy accident. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it, once you have this effect, you know it's different behave than the in the thin version. So this, yes. this could be a different uh, made, uh, different between these two. The thick semi-size uh-huh. definitely better than thin semi-size in terms of uh, the uh, stroke we have. You know, it keeps the stroke from the smear. Mm-hmm. That's the characteristic of the best paper in um, the uh, you know, we found in Red Star Shrine, yes. tend to keep the stroke from smearing part. That's you know, the watermarks. Mm. We we'll call that watermarks. Yeah. Okay, this is a size shrine single. Uh, let me put the size shrine here. Size shrine double. Size shrine single. Uh, size shrine has this is this kind of sparkles. Let me see this one without mica or with mica. The Normal size shrine has mica. This has a sparkles. If you oh. look uh, against light, some degree, uh, um, some angle, you'll see the this. Oh yeah, this is, uh, yeah. for I don't know if I can get people to see yeah, this, but this sparkly. looks like little sparklies Scarlet. throughout. Yeah, this is uh, Scott has ring paper. Also, has the sparkles. And that's from, they put mica in it? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Mica is the kind of uh, powder from the, the shell, sea, sea shells. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. So this, this group uh, is basically used for bonus painting or um, fine line painting. Bonus means uh, uh, elaborated style without uh, outline, okay? Um, the procedure is like this. You can do the stroke or the, the shape or form first with uh, um, water mm-hmm. or ink, and maybe just a little bit of ink and water, and then you charge it with color. That's bonus, oh, okay. uh, bonus stroke uh, for, for, you know, for flowers you can use uh, you can use the carmine or uh, rouge without mm-hmm. the white first to huh? create the petal shape. Then you you drop a little water or white into mm-hmm. it um, to make it uh, you know with more gradation or, or uh, value. So that that's basically what what we call the bonus style, right? So if you uh, if you paint bonus style, you you still have to. Uh, do it like a like a calligraphy, you know. Just uh, um, you, you can do it. Let me do a, like a chunk of a puny, for example. Um, just like. A, What's interesting is you're not worried that you've got pieces of paper under it because it won't bleed through either. <laughs> yeah, you immediately notice that. This is a a stone bridge uh-huh. named after the artist. Uh, I. Uh, I name it after the artist who created this kind of painting on the paper. Um, uh, Shi Chao, his name. Actually, you don't see this in Chinese market. That's uh, because we special mm-hmm. ordered it. I want. I showed the effect, and I, I discussed with the, the uh, our friends in China. And they they uh, try to reproduce that kind of. Right. So it's an absorbent. It's same kind, same kind of base as the uh, the same size shrine kind of paper. 
but it, it has more size. So it almost it blocks the absorbency. So it, I don't worry about uh, uh, bleeding. So all these paper are size, fully mm. size. This one maybe 80 percent, but it's yeah, 80 to 90 percent. And then you can kind of charge the, the uh, before it gets dry. You can use a little bit uh, uh, color to kind of to chip on it. Maybe it's too. Timing is very important, so it has to be certain time, I think. So you can you can drip it some, uh, yeah, like to make a watercolor flower, uh -huh. you know that kind of thing. You can drip uh, some. Uh, drip an opaque color onto the ink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to create a, we call this a tanashikomi. Mm -hmm. Tanashikomi. Mm -hmm. You know, dripping. Dripping. Tanashi call me the Japanese uh, name for it. It's just the, you can use bronze, I think. The you could. Uh, another technique is to just drip water on them. Yeah, yeah, on that's the, the same. Just to make flowers, mm -hmm. like like lichen, lichen uh, things like that. that, that you see this uh, in Japanese paintings mm -hmm. often. So, th so th this is best used on a paper that's got some sizing. Yeah. In it, because if you tried this on unsized paper, it would just bleed and <laughs> yeah, you would lose yeah. the. Yeah, you can use that with care. Uh, yeah, if you can still use it. Uh, we call that a different terminology. It's called embedding. So you use dark first as a base, uh -huh. and then you embed opaque on it. Uh -huh. um, you can still do that because the opaque uh, we use on that on on unsized paper is very thick. On this one, you 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 have to. Kind of let it bleed, uh, let it uh, um, flow on it, right? So, so I, I, you know, I squeeze on it to let it create this kind of uh, water um, stains, just like a watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. You can do with the watercolor paper. It's the same similar technique with the watercolor paper. Yeah, it drains, right? It drains into mm -hmm. it. Yeah. This is for Tarashi Komi. Uh, uh, technique. It's, it's, uh, this paper, by the way, is called Stonebridge. 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 Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, it's a kind of machine-made paper, mm -hmm. so the it's, it's not as uh, natural um, as the. You know, it's very shiny, and not as uh, natural as the sized paper. You can create the mm -hmm. same effect with uh, just the sized paper. This paper has got a very smooth front side to yeah, it. Yeah, shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has a. Yeah, if you paint the flowers, um, it, 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 it's very good. So it's very smooth. It's almost like a hot press, maybe smoother than that. Yeah. Might be good for calligraphy. Calligraphy, yeah, anything that... Calligraphy is, yeah, you don't want to smear. And that's good. So we have the Mika or without Mika uh, version, and this is the double. Uh, let, me, let me compare these four now. So this basically the same kind of weight. Uh, both are uh, single weight shine, and uh, this is treated with the uh, uh, I think it's the mica. So you can see the shininess. Um, if you don't like that kind of uh, uh, sparkles, little little sparkles, you can use the one without mica. Oh, uh, I think the the back side may be less mica, but it has the Oh, this is the front. Mm, I think, yeah, this, you have to use the Mika size. So ah, I see. The, the, otherwise, it's not size. <laughs> Maybe the size on both sides, who knows? Um, it, it should be size on the front size only, I think. Okay, this is this, the, the one without Mika. So I would use this for landscape, something like you don't want the sparklers. Um, so it's a, just personal reference. Um, let me see if we can show the Mika or something. What kind of subject matter you normally do on, on Gondi is a flower, right? Flower. Yeah, fine line mm -hmm. style. So you, you can, you have to do it in multiple layers. We don't have time to really do that. We just do one petal, maybe just, you know, you, you do uh, like a lotus or something. You have to you, you have to outline it with a fine brush, fine uh, tip the brush. 
And then you, you do shading with a uh, transparent color, uh -huh. like a, like a, uh, you, you use a, a, one brush for like a, uh, spreading, like a sponge. So you're holding one hand, you, you remember how we do it, uh, so you kind of spread the ink with this clean brush alternatively and use this is called a two brush technique or separate uh -huh. wash to get the, the shading like that right and you can you can mix a little dark on the top here just to accent it so this this is very controllable it's like a watercolor but it has the softness This one is called Size Tune Single. Without, uh, with makeup. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I don't know if people are going to be able to see the sparklies, but take our word for it, it's there. Yeah. Okay, um, this is the one without makeup. So it, it's not really diff different <laughs> in front of the camera, but uh, this, this one is just more like a regular watercolor paper without any, anything special on the surface. But it's very different than this watercolor paper because the, the, the feel, you know, it's very soft and we use a soft um, padding. Mm -hmm. um, so when I, the first thing I noticed when I came out on board to on, on stretch the watercolor paper is the, 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 the firmness. So I, 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 I like to paint on soft paper, it's, it's a very delicate feel. That's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can paint very delicately. This one is size chun with out without mica. and it's not sparkly. Mm -hmm. And this one is the size chun with a double weight, double size weight, double chun, double weight. It's not a. Uh, um, I think it's it's not seems not he as heavy as the double. One, but um, it's supposed to be the two layers, you know. Okay. But um, we call it double weight. Okay. So I'm. This one was the single. This one's the double, and yeah, it's heavier, but it's not. It's it's yeah. not really really thick like the yeah. triple shun that we looked at before. Yeah, I think it, it should have the mika. Uh, this one comes with the mika on this side. Yeah. Let me see. I can't. I, I'll have to see in the light. Okay, this is the uh, Sigata Wing Shrine, it's the thinnest, so we'll compare the thinnest with the This the one heavy. doesn't have any sparkles as okay. far as I can tell. Maybe, yeah, this one don't, I think, so without Mika. The double weight um, size trend doesn't have the Mika. So that's uh, what you can use for watercolor. It feels more like a watercolor, you know. This one is the thinnest. Um, the advantage is that if you have a design, um, you can see it through. Mm -hmm. It's more translucent. And this one, you have to use a light box. Uh -huh. You have to use. You cannot see through. Right? You cannot see the pattern under it. I can trace. You know, if I draw something on a piece of a, a drawing paper, I can put it right on top of that and then start tracing without the light box. And you have to use the light box against the window or something uh -huh. to, to trace it and, and a thicker one. Uh, same with the single, you know. So this is even, this is the best, um, for me, I, you know, my student really like this. Because the, it's very, um, Sigata Wings is really my favorite in this group because it's thinnest and it has, it's the strongest. It's almost like a silk, um, very strong. One, so let me draw a petal again, just to finish this demo by doing this. I'm not really good at the uh, drawing part, it's very fine line, kind of, you can have a separate edge or something, or some veins or things like that. So, um, the charger, and just do this, uh, 
one for each. And then we shift to the sponge brush. Uh -huh. It's a clean brush. It, uh, this brush should not contain too much water. You want to, but not too thirsty. Uh, just um, clean water to pull the color. To pull to pull the color away from the the edge. So that creates a nice. So the light color is not created on the palette, but on the paper. You know. This is the, the, the so you so you got some hard lines, but they were where you where you originally put them in, and then the the water brush yeah. softens wherever yeah. you wanted yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the gombi uh -huh. technique. We call the uh, separate uh, uh, gradation wash, uh, and then you can you can use a separate color. Let's let's do that with a little bit uh, less pink. And you can leave a line between the two. Sometimes we call it a uh, water line. You know, just this is dry on um, dry. Just uh, and then you can maybe tint it uh, with uh, some other color. Like this one is cicada wing strong. Yeah, very, very strong. Very thin, but strong. Okay, and this um, double sh double weight um, sized shawn paper uh, because of the weight it tends not to kind of wrinkle. It's, it's more stable, and uh, you you can take more pens. Maybe heavy, good for heavy color. Oops, I, I think I, I just used the same brush. This this is supposed to be the clean brush. So it, you know, I can use plenty of water without worry about this. Uh, you can you can you can you can take it out. It's like like a watercolor paper basically. You can do lifting very easily, not tear the paper um, without worry about tearing. So this is a, a strong kind of you can you can put a tape on around it to um, stretch it on, on the board if you want. And this one is called Size Chun Double. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me get a new silk. Before we finish, I want to go through the silk. I think we only have time for this video because my battery will run out soon, I think. With the Shuan group, and plus the, maybe a little bit about the, the silk. I have um, the classical Chinese silk, and we also have the wrinkle-free Japanese silk. Let me see what we have. I think the... I don't have that. Hmm. I'm sorry. I was it there? Wasn't it in this group here? Yeah, let me see. It's, it's just coming. I, I did it in other uh, demos. Maybe you should check my demos. Uh, in maybe. Anyway, I. I just, uh, oh, here, 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 I got it. It's in, uh -huh. in your package, actually, yeah, I included it in your package. That's the Japanese one, mm -hmm. perfect. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that. Okay, here we have the sized um, silk antique color and uh, um, size. I don't think they're hard, uh, they're soft size, maybe hard size, because I, I think it, this is so good stuff. This is called Japanese silk. Um, this pair champagne kind of, it has a little color to it. Right? It looks like, it looks kind of like a, 
Champagne. Yeah, champagne would be good. It's a, it's a, Maybe put it on a piece of white to see that. Yeah, that's a good, okay. And on a white, compared to a white, it's got a little bit of a, mm -hmm. a little bit of a warm tannish yeah. color, maybe like an ivory. Yeah. Let, uh, me, let me show you. This is the typical gold color uh, silk that we we, we have on, on our side. This is the champagne color, uh -huh. also kind of gold. Uh, this is antique. This is antique. It's, a, uh, uh. it's really just you know a name for it. You have to see the picture or just look at the uh -huh. look at here. Yeah. When you're when you're using silk, uh, you know. When, well, let's put it this way: when you're using shun or regular paper, you basically use you just put it right on the on the felt on the on the felt. But when you're using silk, do you put it on a special stretcher? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, for this kind of uh, uh, silk. You better use uh, uh, a frame, a wood frame, and use uh, push pins to, to put pins next to each other, you know, very uh, densely and stretch it to side by side. Do you just wet like the, canvas, do you, know? you wet, uh, before no. you stretch it, you just, you just put it on with the, yeah, yeah, the pins? Just okay. to try to uh, stretch it. Uh, because when, when you paint it wet, it will return uh, the original shape. I see. But if you don't stretch it, it will be... Uh, uh, you, someone says you, if you want, you know, for for wet, you can put for mounting. We put the silk on back of a piece of paper like that. But this paper comes with the paper back, so I said it's pre-mounted. Uh, this could be painted without stretching. Oh, okay. Because it's pre-mounted, and I I think it just this kind of. Uh, um, Silk surface. I don't know if it's real silk or not, but uh, it has the feel of silk. This nice. is a pre-stretched silk. Um, it's a different uh, product. But this is a classical silk style freestyle. Even that's the fun of it. You can you can do watercolor. You can do watercolor uh, just like a regular, um, almost, almost like a paper. You see, this is the beauty of it. Um, you can do it wet into wet. You can use uh, so this is basically um, I use transparent colors to keep the transparency. This is almost like the the uh, semi sized shawn. Oh okay. Yeah. And without worry about the wrinkle. This this one, if I do the same thing, it will crinkle, you know, like. A, but you know, if you don't wash it that much, it might be okay still. So. You can get away of with that, but if you if you wash the background, you will see the the wrinkles. It, it, sometimes it, it, when it's wet, it's okay because the the, uh, the shrinkage change you know with some partial wet. Then in uh, when it dries, it will be not so flat. With Japanese silk, uh, this will keep the same because it's heavy. It's double, almost double. You can. So it's like a spun, a spring, right? You, uh -huh. you, you cannot fold it, you, it bounces right back. This one is very soft. Yeah, it, it, all silk has this kind of uh, springness, you know, like a... But this one is especially very... Um, very easy to handle. You can paint right on top, uh, on, the, uh, on the felt, without uh, any stretching. And you can see I, I, I do wet into wet. Uh, in fact, this, don't worry about the painting, I just try to show the effect. Right? Okay. And uh, this is the, the watercolor uh, effect. You can take thick pens. Just, uh, and for, for things. This silk, one's the Japanese silk that yeah, I'm showing you. You can people. paint almost like a, a watercolor, or um, you can maybe use a acrylic ink. That kind of, this silk is maybe too thick. Thin to um, for thick painting, you have to apply thin layers to reach the consistency. Look at the beautiful, the beautiful way oh, that yeah. paint is drying on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This this one uh, similar. You, I will, I won't do anything, but uh, you will see the wrinkle because you can already see different stretch, uh, different uh, kind of wave on the surface, right? This is the traditional. Um, silk that you need to stretch when you paint. I That's, see. Yeah. 
you can use tape to tape it on the drawing board also. And you have to put a piece of uh, paper, like a uh, drawing paper underneath it to see it because it's very thin. Um, so that's all for this demo. Um, when I recharge, if we have time, we can keep doing this. But uh, sorry about the short, uh, the short cut, uh, cut short, sh cutting it short now. Um, we plan to do all the paper samplers. We have mulberry and have some specialty shrine, like colored, uh, golden shrine, black shrine, all that. Um, we have to do it another time. Well, it's been my pleasure to listen to your valuable, interesting lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. Mark. Mark. For, mm -hmm. Thank Mark for your help. And thank everybody on YouTube. If you have any questions, put it in the comment area. I will answer um, by writing. Bye bye. Finish, finish. Oh, that's that one.